That is way too crowded for me. Um, let's go back to the bus so we don't miss it and we'll go ahead and talk about the drones on the way back. Beautiful morning today. So we're headed on a bus shortly. So the plan is to stack the Mavic 2 Pro against the Mavic 2 Zoom. We wanna see which one's more fun, which one gets you better footage. At the end of the day, we know the quality is pretty much gonna be better on the Pro, but that's really subjective and what gets you the more entertaining, the more dynamic shot. That's where the Zoom has a leg up. So we're gonna go film a pretty cool castle out here and I think it's gonna be a good example of how the two stack up against one another. With that, let's go ahead and hop on the bus. I'll see you guys there. So we just got to Trakai. It looks like it's about a two kilometer walk. So about 25 minutes, I think, to the castle. We're gonna try to find a drone launch point. Let's fast forward a bit. Very scenic here, beautiful area. Can't really see it, but the castle is over that way. So we're gonna go try to find a spot over here where there's not so many people, take off and then uh, get some footage. I think we found our spot. All right, so we just got some footage with the uh, Hasselblad on here. We're actually swapping it off. So I don't know if you guys have seen that before, but swapping this off with the zoom gimbal, get some more footage, dive back in. Let's go back to the bus so we don't miss it and we'll go ahead and talk about the drones on the way back. Strawberry kiwi gelato. I'm about to get this all up in my beard. It's as good as it sounds. All right, so overall thoughts, I wanna start off by saying the fact that I'm a YouTuber. I think in different use cases and different scenarios, I might be more apt to use one over the other. But for me, it's usually quick scenes, quick shots. You want it to be creative, dynamic. And for that reason, I tend to lean towards the zoom. Now that being said, it's funny because so many people say that the pro footage looks soft. And I think, yeah, it probably does, but that's because it's a higher aperture. F2.8 is gonna do that. Higher aperture cameras by default are gonna do that and you're shooting landscapes. So certain things are gonna be kind of out of focus or have that bokeh look to it. So I think ultimately that's something you have to be aware of, but that does allow you to bring in more light, shoot in lower lights, um, get depth of field, depending on what you're actually shooting, if you wanna get your drone close to something. So the Pro does offer a dynamic capability. So if you look at something like the DJI Inspire, which is a $5,000 drone with the actual camera built on, 
similar situation. You're gonna see a lot of things out of focus. You're gonna see that bokeh, but it looks very pleasing. It looks professional, it looks nice. So for that reason, I don't necessarily wanna credit and say that it has a soft image. That's what it's meant to have. And if you wanna stop down the aperture, you can. Now, if you want the ability to just take the footage right out of the drone, post it, use it for whatever project you're working on, yeah, I think the Air and the Zoom have better credibility there. Just because they're sharper by nature, they kind of have a lower color profile, you don't have to color grade them. It all depends how you shoot, obviously, and what modes you shoot in. But those out of camera may look a little bit better, but that's because you have to play with pro footage. You don't know any photographers that are gonna snap a photo, JPEG, and just upload it as is. They're always gonna do some post-processing, they're always gonna edit it. To me, that's why it's called the Pro. But for that same reason, a lot of times I end up being drawn towards the zoom because I know it can get these really creative parallax looks and effects. And when you look at this building, we are kind of swooping around it. We've got a cool zoom look into it. It's just things you don't see as normally today, especially on platforms like YouTube, which is where I'm shooting on. So I feel like it gives me an edge up over normal drone footage, regardless of how good the drone footage looks, being able to zoom is a very unique capability of that drone. So I actually lucked out because the zoom gimbal I bought, you guys saw, and I'll show you the screen right now as well. I have a lot of issues with roll and yaw, especially if I'm zooming and panning at the same time. I don't know if this is a normal problem with the zoom. I think I would have seen more if it was. It's probably the fact that I bought a third party one. It was through an authorized reseller. It should be an official DJI one. Um, but when I started seeing these problems, I actually used Amazon Pay and I contacted the seller for an exchange. They never got back to me and luckily Amazon Pay took care of it. So they refunded it, it was free. And now I'm on the fence. Do I just wanna deal with the issues that you guys are seeing or do I wanna go ahead and buy another one? Cause it is about anywhere from 300 to $400 to replace. But that being said, the image looks great. The zoom works. I want to believe that this is an official DJI one but I don't know for hundred percent. So something to call out. It was an official DJI authorized reseller. I got it through, everything works. The firmware recognizes it. But at the end of the day, I have these weird yaw and roll issues, especially when zooming. It is not a trip to Trakai without a cabina. So which one should you get? It really comes down to your use cases, but if you ask me, I would go for the zoom. In most cases, unless you're a professional photographer or videographer, this just makes the most sense because it gives you the most dynamic footage and it's still a great picture quality. It's also cheaper, so you're gonna save some money. And if you want to, you still have the option again to do the gimbal swap. You can always buy the pro gimbal or do vice versa, buy the pro drone and buy the zoom gimbal third party if you're comfortable installing it. Maybe you can't get as close to a building as you want to because of a fly zone or some type of safety measures. This is gonna let you get that extra reach. Plus you have a lot more creativity in your potential shots. If you're someone who takes a lot of photography with your drones, it's not something I do. I almost always just have it recording the entire flight time. I may adjust some settings on the fly, change to 2K 60P, but generally I'm having this thing record video and I very infrequently take photos. Keeping that in mind, if you do take a lot of photos, maybe that's your primary use case, at that point I would probably push you towards the Pro, but in general I think drones for most of their use cases are really built around videography, and for that case, again, the zoom is something where I'd push you. We actually went back out to the castle today, so that's some of the footage you're seeing right now, and I didn't even end up putting the Pro lens on here. I kept the zoom on the whole time, and it's just so much fun. It's things that you don't necessarily see a lot of right now. Not everyone has this camera, so they can't create the same parallax shots, the same zoom shots, um, get the same reach that you can with this camera. So at the end of the day, if you can only get one of these, I'm gonna push you towards the zoom. That's my recommendation. If I can only carry one of these gimbals with me, it's gonna be the zoom. So thanks for tuning in guys today. As always, it's been a pleasure. If you haven't subscribed already, definitely consider it. If you have any questions on these, how to swap the gimbals, which one I use, what settings I use, definitely feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time.